I'm Mally Moore. I'm Nathan Simmons. And I am a demon to some and an angel to others. Boy, isn't that the fucking truth? <laughs> <laughs> this is the Silver Lottics playlist, a podcast that shows it from there. Anyway. Wow, we're, so season six, we are <laughs> not caring anymore. We are trying hard. We give it up. We've made it two episodes <laughs> in and you're out. I'm already done with this season. I'm going to be real with you right now. Oh, you know what? I actually made a flub. Let me start over. Oh, great. Uh, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Leave it in. Where's the Where's the sound? Uh, you know what? I can't find the sound effect. Don't worry about it. Mm. Anyway, <clears throat> this is actually the Spooky Linings Playlist. We did it. A podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's spookiest endings. <laughs> because as the calendar is telling me, mm. gentlemen, this is the first Monday of October. Yeah. And uh, of course, we all know what that means. Like We're kicking off four episodes in a row of the spookiest movies this side of the Mississippi. So, yeah. In this case, across the Atlantic, pretending to be this side of the Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Across the Atlantic? Yeah, because this movie is d- definitely filmed in, in the UK, if you weren't aware of it. Oh, I thought you meant where the three of us were. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're also being redubbed as we record this, yeah. so uh, yeah, yeah. who knows? <laughs> we're going to get new people in to, to, to redub all of us through this episode. I hadn't, yeah, this is... I. I learned two things today. One, Nathan's older than me. Two, he's British. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's why it, That's why Dustin brought me on for the crank movies. He's mm-hmm. like, you're, you're the only one who can understand what Jason Statham is going yeah. through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so if you're new to the show, first of all, welcome. Second of all, the Spooky Lines play us, as I said. We're watching four horror movies. Third of all, get the fuck out now. <laughs> for real. This, is, this episode is nothing but pleasure and pain indivisible. Indivisible. <laughs> With liberty and justice for all. <laughs> <laughs> we like to watch movies such as the movie we're watching today, the original 1987 Hellraiser, mm-hmm. and uh, we like to find the silver lining in the spooky ending here, because this one, uh, as you guys are aware, mm-hmm. I think this we're going to follow this one under, under uh, confusion using ending baffling yeah. yeah yeah but we can't do this alone guys because you know uh there's a couple of cenobites here mm. but we're i think we're at least one short yeah so why don't we bring on uh known cenobite <laughs> butterball <laughs> chatter teeth <laughs> the engineer himself yes yes the engineer himself mr j t kelly Woo! Hey, thanks for having me. A hero's welcome. You know, this is actually so right because we always have JT on our Halloween episodes Mm -hmm. and there was almost a Halloween Hellraiser crossover movie. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's why I almost will have an opinion about this movie. Oh, good. (laughs) Well, and I mean, JT, he's just a real Hellraiser. Mm -hmm. Uh We had to have him. Yeah, absolutely. Raising hell over there. That was my nickname back in high school. He's the Del Arnhardt of high school. (laughs) Raising hell. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so yeah jt uh welcome to the episode i think you're you're in for a residency with us because mm-hmm. you'll be here for the next week's episode as well yes uh wh- i know you know a little bit about halloween <laughs> like vicariously through other people He's heard of it yeah you- you've heard of halloween but <laughs> hellraiser what's your relationship with it Look, I think I've seen this movie in its entirety one time when I was, like, mm-hmm. 14. Mm-hmm. But look, this isn't my favorite horror movie, oh, but no. I'm excited to hear your guys' <laughs> opinions and the facts and what y'all come up with. You feel nasty watching after yeah. watching this. Yeah. It's a goopy movie. <laughs> it is super goop. We'll talk about it, but evidenced by the second shot of the movie, which is <laughs> the dirtiest fingernails in all of cinema. Oh, my. Do you guys want to say? That yeah. is my first note. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Well, I, I, I'm of the same ilk. I had seen this movie exactly one time yeah. before this episode, for, and then I rewatched it. And one time? Yeah. I'm part of the Fuji's. Um, <laughs> I, I just, I, it's it's not for me. Yeah. I I will. I don't think I'll ever rewatch this movie again. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'm <laughs> hardest of passes. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat. Where like, and that's the episode. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. joining Thanks, us. Um, Rest in peace, oatmeal. <laughs> See you next week. Anyway, uh, our, the clue for next week is uh, um, no. I, I yeah, I, I was kind of in the same boat. This was one of those movies where, as a teenager, I'd always heard about how influential and how like. You know, what a huge following Hellraiser had. And also at the time, I I think when I saw this one, like there were already nine of these, Yeah, you know, and so I was like, well, there's got to be something there that grabs people. And I remember rent. this was a rental for me, Mm. watching it with my dad and just kind of at the end being like, I don't, am I stupid? Like, why why don't I get, do I not get this or do I not, is it just not my bag? And I think that upon rewatch, it's just not my bag. Like I... I love Clive Barker as a writer. 
um, the thief of always and Aberat and stuff like that, I think is just fantastic. But this just doesn't do it for me, which is why I'm excited about this remake. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see a new take on this material. I am very curious about the remake of this. Yeah. yeah same. Mally, what about you? Uh, I think the first time I saw Fire Uplifter was, <laughs> I mean, I was young for sure. Mm-hmm. Heck Elevator. Yeah. <laughs> Heck Elevator is so good. <laughs> but no, I mean, you know, um, Underworld Upper, it's just, it's not my favorite movie. <laughs> sure. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I really, really dislike Nether Realm lifting. Yeah. yeah. It's just not for me. You're not a, a Hades jumper fan? <laughs> no, I'm not. You know, Flame Up just didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I will. I will say uh-huh. this movie walked so Fifty Shades could have run. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, I mean, there's there's stuff in here that I dig, but it's it's stuff that I at the same time I'm not sure if it's on purpose. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, yeah, some of it is like, oh, I like how dreamlike this is, but I can't tell if that's. Uh, by design or just because it doesn't hold together as a narrative yeah all of the above yeah now, <laughs> i i'm gonna feel bad because i know people are gonna tune into this episode because of the new one and there are there are fans of this franchise mm-hmm. and man I, this is the only one i've seen and it's insane to me that there's as many movies in this franchise as there are so this like clive barker is really only involved in the production of like the first four which yeah. kind of form their own story yeah. I, I do think the second one is superior to this one mm. but i after that they sort of adopted the die hard rule right mm-hmm. where like every sequel the script didn't begin as a hellraiser movie the cloverfield rule <laughs> right a hellraiser 5 i think is a scott derrickson joint and he like got it produced uh, because he re- yeah he like rewrote a different like a police procedural that he'd written into a hellraiser like literally most of those movies are here's an unrelated horror film that doug bradley cameos in as yeah. pinhead <laughs> underground escalator six <laughs> svu basically I'm, I'm gonna try and have some positive things to say um when we start discussing it but man it's few and far between and yeah. a- again if you're a fan of this franchise more power to you yeah. i just i haven't seen any other ones i know the third one apparently has got a real crazy fucking third act to it the third one is like fully mtv vibes and then yeah. the fourth one is like a centuries spanning Anne Rice wannabe kind of thing with Adam what? Scott. Oh boy. Yeah, I know Adam Scott's in one of them. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that. And and the final act takes place in space. Yeah. yeah. What? There, isn't there a cyberspace one too? I gotta see this fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, the cyberspace one is called Hell World. Nice. <laughs> uh, I've never seen it, but it has a young Henry Cavill, what? and huh. the villain is played by Lance Henriksen. <laughs> Maybe I do got to see this movie. <laughs> the, guys, this franchise sounds fucking dope. It's, it's <laughs> truly wild. Maybe we're looking at all this wrong. Yeah, I... Maybe I'm just too stupid to get this this whole thing. No, I I think this is one of those things where like their reach, like their their reach out, out exceeded their grasp. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like the like I mean, Clive Barker's been very upfront about the fact that he had no idea how to fucking direct when he made this movie. And you know what? It shows. You, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you 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 notice. <laughs> and that's not to say I I dig I dig Nightbreed, which is like a fucking disaster. But he like it, it's a fun offbeat weird movie. He made a another movie called Lord of Illusions that's like a really fun noir with Scott Bakula fighting wizards. <laughs> <laughs> like, this movie just doesn't, has never worked for me. Well, Dustin and I were talking uh, when we were watching the, re-watching the movie, and it was it's crazy on how iconic Pinhead and the Cenobites are. For being on screen for three seconds? Yeah. Yeah, and for being... <laughs> not so great movies yeah yeah and so it's like do we like the movies or do we like clive barker here that's what i'm saying like the the iconography is like yeah. i forgot how little the fucking cinnabites are in this movie mm-hmm. yeah. yeah they're they're like minor they're minor characters yeah. and i really i don't think that they really latch on to that until the third one because the the villain of the second one is essentially mostly julia mm. and then and then the third one is like okay what if we just set a bunch of demons loose on earth <laughs> yeah. fucking julia well, I, I, I think this is kind of the inherent issue with franchises like this one and honestly, Friday the 13th too, mm-hmm. because in hindsight, when you think Hellraiser, you think Pinhead, when you think Friday the 13th, you think Jason. Sure. Because these are so early on that the formula is not established yet and they don't get to it to like the third one. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, we're 40 minutes in really before we get Pinhead. I mean, I know he's there at the very beginning a little bit, but yeah. they don't get introduced like the Cinnabites don't get introduced until like 40 minutes into the movie. Right. So it's... 
when, when you're doing something this cerebral, you know, I, I think maybe this works better on paper in the novella form than it does. And it do- it certainly does because the novella is great. Yeah. I will say this is the longest 90 minute oh movie I've ever <laughs> fucking seen. It begs you to not pay attention to it. Mm-hmm. It is like really trying hard. I literally watched it yesterday. Like as the credits rolled in this movie, I literally like was pushing like stop on the remote and audibly saying, thank fucking God. Because yeah. mm-hmm. good Lord, that was a long movie. Well, I remember pausing it when Pinhead finally shows up and has his little speech. Yeah. And I'm like pausing and I'm like, good God, we've still got like over half a movie. To go. Right. Yeah. And this was also one of the movies where like I could tell Mally was wasn't into it because he was texting us about it during the movie, <laughs> <laughs> which is like kind of rare at this point. Yeah. Well, I think I think Nathan, you were just shocked that I was text. I was watching the movie on a Saturday and not moments <laughs> before we recorded. Yeah, no, that, that's for next week's movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, if you're not familiar with Hellraiser, um, well, at least the original, mm-hmm. why don't we discuss a little further in detail? Or we can just not. <laughs> So, the year is 1987. Uh, as we mentioned, the director is Clive Barker. What a fucking year. Oh, I was being so conceived <laughs> again. Nathan, older than me. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think that's where Pinhead start- originated from? Like the birth that Nathan gave birth t- to Pinhead? Gave rise to Probably. Him? Yeah. I think that makes sense. Oh my god, long lost twins. <laughs> <laughs> the movie stars Andrew Robinson, Claire Higgins, Ashley Lawrence, and Sean Chapman. Mm-hmm. I thought you were about to say Sean Penn. I was like, what, <laughs> really? Motherfuckers and, and everything. Thing. It's Doug Bradley, right? Yeah, it's, it's lead Pinhead. Cenobite. <laughs> yeah, lead Cenobite as he's credited in this movie. Uh, the budget was $1 million and it managed to gross $14 million worldwide. Mm-hmm. So, a success. And yeah, a success at that time for sure. 71% on Rotten Tomatoes. Disagree. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I'd put it. Maybe 50s? You better flip those two numbers. <laughs> 17%? <laughs> no, I, I fully agree with you, dude. Like, I, I feel kind of like a punk for not digging this movie. So I'm like, I'm trying to find a way to talk about it that's not just, ah, this fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, uh, why don't we revisit the trailer? Yeah. And maybe that'll spark something that we actually like about this movie. Cause revisit? I visit. I've never fucking seen it. <laughs> Cause I don't want to spend an, an hour just, just dunk it on a movie. Sure. Of course. That's trying. You know what I mean? Right. We can do that for the happening or something like that. But yeah, <laughs> I have one positive note. Yeah. Mm. Technically two. Okay. No, no, it's for later. Okay. Okay. Well, here's the trailer. I love that New World Pictures logo. So close to the Saban Films logo. Oh, yeah. I thought when it first appeared on screen, that's what we were getting. His name is Clive Barker. Stephen King loves this movie. Mm -hmm. So, wait, so Stephen King just knows his name. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, Stephen King, that was talking about his writing, not necessarily his filmmaking. Yeah. Well, Roger Ebert's review, too, is like, uh, maybe Stephen King's thinking of a different Clive Barker. <laughs> <laughs> I think he gave this movie half a star. Hellraiser. Beyond any terror you have imagined. A nightmare. No. Unlike anything you have witnessed. Then they're showing, like, my favorite shots of the movie in the trailer. Yeah, yeah only the good stuff. Yeah, I can't believe there's not a shot of a guy eating crickets in the trailer. That's the money shot. Yeah. Demon Thrussy. <laughs> Uh, that's the trailer line right there, buddy. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned the logo because there's there's a few points to this movie where Frank just straight up looks like Ivan Ooze. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> when we were watching it, I was like, oh, he's at the Ivan Ooze stage of his transformation. I'm pretty sure they showed the logo four different times in the trailer. They did, yeah. <laughs> I guess we can start at the beginning. I mean... <laughs> Like I said, dirtiest fingernails in all of cinema. I oh think this movie's got God. it. God, it's like he washed his hands in dirt. Yeah, and from the beginning, like I do, I love Christopher Young's score for a lot of this movie. There's some bits that get a little like hokey, but I, I it really, it really works for me for the most part. He straight up steals uh, a cue from The Shining at one point. Oh shit, really? He, ex- like to a T. All he did was add a few extra notes to it, but it's... ah, he vanilla iced it, huh? <laughs> yeah, he did. He really did. It's, nice. It's when 
it's north towards the end when uh Frank is killed yeah. Larry and he's he's kind of strokes Julia's cheek and there's blood on her cheek. Sure. It is exactly the a cue from the show. Fuck, man, spoilers. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Shit, sorry. <laughs> um my 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 question from the beginning, and this isn't like me not knowing how card games work. I don't <laughs> yes, it is. I, I'm not quite sure how you solve this puzzle. Right? It's not a Rubik's Cube, it's just one piece pops out and you put it back in. You just yeah, you you move it. Yeah. You stroke the circle, a piece pops out, you push that piece down, you twist it. It Sometimes it solves itself. Hey, God, it sounds like you're speaking my language. <laughs> <laughs> my first note is how it, this uh, this thing is way too easy to solve. Sure. Yeah. It's so easy. <laughs> like, there's only one way to solve it. Otherwise, you're solving it wrong. Like, when the piece pops out... You push it back in. Yeah, you just push it right back in. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know that, that toy as a kid where you push the round thing... The, round cylinder into the square or the, the circle hole and sure, that's yeah. literally what it's doing it's solving itself yeah yeah <laughs> J- jt couldn't solve that puzzle as a child no, <laughs> I, which means i'll be okay when all you guys mess with the puzzle box so. yeah for well here's the thing i just wouldn't solve it because i'd be too bored i'm like this this is no this i'd give this to my kid probably <laughs> i lit all of my candles and took my shirt off for this yeah <laughs> <laughs> and got sweaty hey i gotta say i may dislike this movie but i relate to this opening puzzle box scene sure because you your house looks like that it's fucking sweaty it's dark i lit all my candles i am not wearing a shirt yeah that's how you're recording right now i filled all of my bowls full of maggots Mm -hmm. yeah you don't just you know it really brings the room together yeah yeah that being said clean your fucking kitchen yes jesus christ let's talk about the main couple of the movie uh julia and larry the the larry the husband and the stepmom yeah they they are both insufferable yes Uh, i i struggle to find a likable quality to either of them they have none no absolutely and and they're both good actors like they're but they're like they're given nothing in this movie they're they're doing (laughs) stage performances they are yes I think Larry, uh, we, Dustin and I were talking, I think Larry uh, plays a better father than he does a husband. Sure. Like, he seems like he genuinely cares, but Jesus Christ. He's, he's somehow better at Child's Play 3. <laughs> oh, as, yeah. Uh, as that, that yeah. character, yeah, the creepy barber. There's, 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 too, there's too many mentions of the word daddy. Oh, yeah. 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 Me, just, what is with the daddy? Uh, <laughs> everything has come to daddy. No, thank you, skinless man. They gave <laughs> no, me real, you. like, Catherine O'Hara vibe. Like, the, the parents in Beetlejuice. Like, yeah. that mm. was the vibe I was getting from them, <laughs> well, except not entertaining. Well, it also doesn't help that the makeup artist... And the costume designer said, let's just, what would David Bowie look like in drag? That's what Julia's going <laughs> to look like. Jesus Christ. Uh, okay, first That's of all. That's exactly what her style is. Julia is a style icon. <laughs> <laughs> I think everything she wears in this movie is amazing. Yeah? And I'm not just, this is not a bit. Yeah, because she raided David Bowie's closet. Yeah, exactly. She, yes. is, that, is that a wig? Is it a wig she's wearing, do you think? I don't think so. Because, no, well, the flashback scenes, you know, she's got a little bit longer hair. That's just what the 80s look like, Oh, no, dude. I no, but it, it's something about it. It just had like she had a lot of headroom. I, I I don't know. It looked like a wicked a little bit to me. Yeah, Max headroom. It was the eighties. <laughs> uh, you know this this you 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 bring up a good point though because like one of the things that drove me crazy when I was a kid watching this uh, when we rented it the DVD had a bunch of like these old um, behind the scenes videos and promo videos for the movie that that aired like in the 80s on British television and the British had TV in the 80s they <laughs> did yeah well they, well they called it Tillywhackers but yeah uh, they <laughs> uh, turn over to, turn the Tillywhacker to channel 4 it's the fourth one we have the um no but- <laughs> I almost spit out my coffee <laughs> <laughs> but the, the 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 narrator kept describing it as a gothic romance and everyone behind the scenes was just like yeah see it's not just a horror movie it's a romance and i'm like i, I don't mean, yeah. I, I mean dude but i kind of call bullshit on that <laughs> i don't know the way frank comes to the door like he's fucking fabio in the rain it's, oh it's, my dick, God. it's dick tremaine from twin peaks that is what he's doing <laughs> like it's fucking amazing we talk i mean we we constantly hear about how the the uh unrealistic standards uh, for a woman's life. Like, how often have you guys opened up the door yeah. and seen a hulk of a man just standing in the pouring rain with a leather jacket? Because it still hasn't happened to me yet. I live in downtown Pensacola, so it's actually, like, more Pretty common regular. than you yeah. think. Yeah. It happens all the time in Alabama. Yeah. Dude, I've, I've been to West Hollywood. <laughs> I also gotta say, too, um, 
I just now I'm putting this together mm. when when Larry cuts his hand his hand on the nail the top of a nail yeah I mean Tetanus. honestly got me it got me like that I was I couldn't deal with it's that. a good effect yeah but I didn't put it together till because I got the movie playing right now in the background that it's a uh, metaphor because Julia is getting nailed by Frank right That's there. Good. <laughs> I'm, just not, yeah. I'm just not putting that together. <laughs> it's it's subtle, <laughs> but it's there. I love how the line that when he walks into the attic and his hand is dripping blood and she's like, is it deep? Yeah. The most watery of blood. This dude's <laughs> got some kind yeah. of blood disease. <laughs> and he just basically holds it out. Like he might as well have said like, I flew up. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I cut my hand. Dude, I don't like it's, cr- I don't think anyone, any of the special effects people had seen blood before. Before, because like this whole movie's just everything's flooded with fucking fruit punch. Yeah, yeah. it's giallo blood. Like this is it's, it's like 1970s Italian soup. Yeah, yeah. Clive Barker saw other movie directors and said those guys all have subtlety and subtext in their stuff, and they're fucking cowards. We're gonna go <laughs> no, direct that, to it. That's the ex- yes. Clive Barker is Garth Marenghi in this movie. The oh only God. way that it would be more dra- drastic is if he was in the film playing Frank. <laughs> yes, and even then. <laughs> Like Frank, alive Frank is kind of styled like Clive Barker. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have ever go to his Wikipedia page. It's the hardest fucking Arthur author photo you've ever seen in your DC, life. DC, do you think? Right, let's pull it up. We were watching this around lunchtime yesterday, and like we were, I was like halfway through it. My wife came home. She's like, "Oh, you want to eat lunch?" I was like, "We better not right it's now." Not, it's not the time. Not the time. Um, not 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 the movie. <laughs> Look at that shit. Yeah, he's got some big hands. Yeah. <laughs> what are those pants? <laughs> yeah, he's so fucking cool. This is like, he's he's like one step away from Guy Fieri cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, yo, this dude got the specialty Jinkos. <laughs> those limited. The limited edition ones? That shit's hard to find. <laughs> and he's rocking suspenders with the Jinkos. <laughs> it makes too much. It all, it all makes sense. Now. Yeah. Oh my God. Nathan fucking wishes he could. <laughs> I wish. I really wish. <laughs> I would pay so much much money to see Nathan and we, <laughs> <laughs> we see uh, we, so Frank yeah introduces himself as I'm brother Frank mm-hmm. and Frank sounds like he's being dubbed in real time yeah. Yeah. like I, it's it's so strange and I think he's one of the many characters that was supposed to be British yeah and then the studio was like no you have to redub every like there's there's a few characters that are clearly meant to be English who have been dubbed with American accents. Oh yeah, no, I think uh, I think Frank was completely redubbed. Yeah, yeah, he, he didn't know until the movie came out. DC, can you turn this fucking trailer off oh, that you're so, watching right sorry, now? Sorry. Lightning bug. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, um, but you know, well, the thing is, they filmed it in the UK, yeah. and then yeah, the producers are like, we want to make this more appealing to the US so right. that's why it's an ambiguous city uh, but it's supposed to be but like it's not because they, they, <laughs> it's not. they're literally at the like the train station yeah. at one point yeah. and characters are constantly talking to Julia who has a British accent about we're so glad you came back over here yep yeah. They meant from Kansas to Oklahoma. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> Tucson, Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Bucks. <laughs> when they're having the dinner, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but when Julia gets up to leave and Larry stands up too, there's a woman off screen with the most insane ADR I've ever heard that goes, she's talking about Larry's hand. She goes, did it hurt? Yes, I, <laughs> yes, yes, I wrote that down. <laughs> good stuff. Yeah. It was so baffling. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I Can do also, love. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I was just gonna say the one. I like how this movie does have a little bit of comedy. Like I think that's unintentional, but for me, it's good. But mm-hmm. the the movers when they're helping move the mattress in. Sure. And, oh my god! This is my favorite scene. This dude getting cuckled in his old home by the movers, <laughs> getting his getting beards for the man. It's so fucking funny, dude. But then the man says, "Oh, is that your daughter? She's got your mom's looks." And he's like, "Oh, her, her mom's dead." Yeah. <laughs> and the guy's just like, "Oh." oh. <laughs> Uh, and then the other mover just laughs at him. Yeah, <laughs> the other guy gets gets a good uh, shoulder jab into him. <laughs> right. <laughs> so good, dude. Can we t- can we talk about one? Frank is a fucking scumbag. Oh my yeah. god, yes. It, the scene where he asked to kiss the bride, the way he's sitting in that fucking chair. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so funny. Just like he's like leaned back, legs fucking spread, like yeah. thrown over the armrest, bottle in hand. Oh my. god. God. Uncle Jesse style. <laughs> <laughs> and then he he goes, he's a real chin kisser, this Frank guy. He likes the chin, don't he? Yeah. <laughs> I need you to suck my fingers and then I need to bite your chin. Those are my moves. I can 
could eat a chin for hours. <laughs> <laughs> also, he cuts her fucking wedding dress. Yeah. yeah. Bro, those are not cheap. Yeah, no. and, and she definitely, that's a rental, dude. You're not going to get your deposit back on that. Oh, no, not, no. no. But, that, like, one of, the, one of the things I do like about this sequence, as over the top as it is, when he, like, when he takes her to bed, like, she seems apprehensive. Like, mm-hmm. there's a part of her that's still like, oh, this guy's a fucking lunatic. Like, she recognizes that as it's happening. It's, it's almost played as, like, this is a fantasy she's had, but yeah, also the right. reality of it happening is terrifying. Right, absolutely. I also, I, I dig the old school, like, haunted house vibe of the resurrection mm-hmm. scene mm-hmm. i like this this stuff is really fun for me yeah. oh yeah no frank coming back from the dead is is very very well directed oh, but the, pr- the practical effects are great yeah. but also he when he screams he sounds like a fucking baby he yeah. sure does he sure does. he does but i love that it happens right when the spine connects to the brain yeah. like yeah. i think that's really good and isn't there a lightning cue right then too oh, yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. it you better believe it like it's just it's all it's like super creepy and all well done and then it just cuts to him he's like <laughs> he's like little voldemort <laughs> that's my positive note uh, so now that we passed that like yeah I'm, I'm bound out y'all have a good one. Oh, okay that's the end of your notes <laughs> that's it that was the only good one i had oh good <laughs> <laughs> I I I just too like like the the guy okay so here's my problem with this movie it's, Steve it, yes well it's it's two movies in one yeah because it's it's two competing stories it's you've got these dimensional hopping demons yeah that are trying to capture this guy that escaped uh-huh. and then you've also got this but not actively they're not actively trying to look for him they're just like oh wait oh yeah, oh, yeah. they didn't even know he escaped oh, <laughs> these, <laughs> these, these right. are a bunch of terrible at their job uh-huh. yeah. well, Pinhead's like no I don't think that's true <laughs> no <laughs> no <Nuh-uh. laughs> But no, so it, you got that, and then you've also got this Norman Bates esque kind of like luring people in mm-hmm. thing, like like you said, like a gothic romance. It's just too much. It's too much happening at once. That I and then meanwhile we're, we're getting uh, Kirsty having this sort of like awakening with this boy at the table who's very uh, doesn't take no for an answer. <laughs> Who eats cigarettes? How many fucking times do you think he burned his fucking oh my mouth god learning that cigarette trick? Yeah. But he's at he's at dinner. You're eating, so that means he's like, hold on, I gotta do this trick, oh, and then put it out and take a bite oh, of my. <laughs> I mean, I was so confused by the geography of this oh table my God. because she like he like pours her a drink, and then we cut to the wide shot, and they're like Bruce Wayne and Vicky Vale, yeah. like, on <laughs> two <laughs> opposite sides. Oh, also, this guy has got an agenda because he's pouring her wine, and she's like, okay, that's enough, that's enough, and he's like, yeah, no, she sa- she says if I have any more drinks, I'm gonna have to lie down, and he goes like, so lie down. I was yeah. like, don't tell her you're getting yeah, her drunk to yes. put her in bed you fucking creep <laughs> and then the, all the adults laugh at that joke oh yeah her parents her are just like <laughs> well that i mean th- you gotta understand that was a funny joke in 87 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah you're right you're right yeah the casual date rape was real funny back then there is there's <laughs> one real confusing line to me like after what's her name leaves like yeah. one of the women's like oh does it still hurt and larry responds with only when i drink yeah what the fuck <laughs> does that mean and everyone laughs their ass off it's yeah. like yeah uh, and it's also there's no good men in this movie no like not a not a one of them because even the men uh julie brings home right f- so her, her plan is i'm gonna bring men home and frank's gonna suck their souls yes yeah. <laughs> like fucking shake soon <laughs> <laughs> oh he gonna he gonna lick them chins all the guys she brings home look like they do celebrity impersonations of mm-hmm. 80s rock stars mm-hmm. one of them is bobo <laughs> phil collins the next one is <laughs> the next one's bobo sting <laughs> oh my god but even these guys, like the first guy she brings home, uh-huh. like they they come in the door, they're kind of like flirting a little bit, but then he on a dime turns so rapey oh, so quickly because yeah. like so creepy. She kind of hesitates for a moment. He like grabs her by the collar. He's like, "You're not going to change your mind now, are you?" Right? <laughs> it's like Jesus, dude. Yeah, that guy goes from like being in the bar and being like, "Um, I don't suppose maybe we could." <laughs> oh, wait, go oh, oh, sorry. That's my. I'm in England. I mean, I mean, I'm in America now. I, oh, sorry. Uh, it's a. It sure is a beautiful day here today. <laughs> <laughs> that's my impression of Jude Law doing an American accent. I sure could go for a Yankees game and a hot dog. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Pete, Peter, you've messed with the laws of the multiverse. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, this movie does. This movie gives you some Doctor Strange, and it's already uh-huh. dealing with some multiverse stuff. Yeah. Uh, sure. Everybody's getting strange in this movie. Uh, everybody's getting some strange. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> if you consider chin looking strange, <laughs> sweet chin music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bringing it back. <laughs> Imagine if it cut the movie cuts to the credits and fucking. Shawn Michaels' music starts playing. (laughs) I'm not your boy, Toy. I'm your sexy boy. (laughs) She brings that first guy home, and and Frank, like I said, sucks his soul like he's Shang Tsung. She's in the bathroom, and Larry's like, hey, whatever. And she goes, I'm feeling sick. I need a brandy. And I'm like, oh, just a hair of the dog. I guess. I, I I don't... when I'm sick, I don't think I want brandy. No, I, I thought the same thing, but I, I do I love... I was always more of a Moesha fan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the shot of Frank crawling across the floor is really good and scary, but oh, I... Oh, he's like a little baby? Uh, yeah. <laughs> little tiny Frank. <laughs> this attic has got to be soundproof. Yes! Because she's literally like, no! Well, like- <laughs> well, there's that, and then like later when her and Larry are, are getting into it, and yeah. Frank is like threatening to kill Larry, yeah. and she's just screaming no, 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 please don't. Yeah, no, please, please. Don't. And Larry's just ignoring the yep. fuck out of her. Yeah. He, he, like, so oblivious, dude. <laughs> and and I, I kept finding, like, I think I would find Frank scarier with any other voice. Yeah. Like, there was something about the vocal performance that just didn't work for me at all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds like the dude that dubbed over his lines wasn't like they didn't let him see the movie. They were just like, hey, read this. Sure. Yeah. Just do some wild lines. We'll we'll hope it works. <laughs> sure. K- Kirsty though is like, I guess she's supposed to be the protagonist, but right. I question that because this doesn't. This is not her movie. She's the protagonist in that she's left at the end. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I think she does. She comes into her own in the second one for sure. I think Frank is the main character, isn't he? <laughs> yes. Well, see, I think Julie. I think Julia is. Yeah, I agree. This is why I think it's two competing movies. It's an. It's an. It's an ensemble film. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 two competing movies. It's almost like they're trying to do a Nightmare on Elm Street for her, uh-huh. and then they're doing this weird other thing with Julia. It, it just doesn't work, right. for me. Like it falls apart. Oh, wait, oh, this is where the movie falls apart yeah, this, for this you? Is, you know, everything else pretty solid up until this point. It actually all makes sense yeah, otherwise. Yeah. Fuck movie did you guys watch? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about Kirstie. This girl is dedicated to her job mm-hmm. because I don't know about you guys, but if I worked in a pet store mm-hmm. and a homeless guy came in, yeah. put his hands into a bug terrarium, yeah. and then just started eating them, there is no way... My minimum wage job is worth confronting that guy. I'd be like, you know Those what? Those are like a delicacy in England. They call them Jiminy's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see commercials for them all the time on the telly. Oh, my God. I, I really apologize to any UK listeners. We, we're not doing well in Britain right <laughs> it's now. It's fine. That's not even a real place anyway. Jeez. The UK and Ohio, none of them are real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, would, I would not confront this guy. I'd be like, you know what? That guy, he's on his own. He's, right. he's doing his own thing. Let, let the man rock. She says, Give those back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if you just hurled right there? <laughs> you have to pay for those. Yeah, for real. This is when I wrote down uh, as, as Frank becomes more powerful, so does Julia's hair and blouses. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I noticed that too. Like her shoulders are reaching up to God. I believe the word you're looking for is fierce. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Cover girl. <laughs> Smizing. <laughs> let's, let's talk about when when Kirsty finally meets the Cenobites, unless you guys want to talk about anything else before that. I am I'm obsessed with the scene where Larry and Julia are in the bed and and Frank splits a rat yes. next to them and Larry hears fucking nothing. Yes. <laughs> oh, my only real remaining note is fuck those rats. Yeah. <laughs> also, Frank says you can't love him like Tommy Wiseau in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. Um, so, Kersey puts together the puzzle box. Yeah. Immediately. Wait. As we established, not difficult. No, no. It's, it's like, uh, yeah, you press one button and you're good. This is why was, when she wakes up in the hospital while the nurse is watching a show about flowers blooming. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. I thought that was weird. I, I mean, th- that that seems pretty effective, I guess, when yeah. her meeting the, the engineer guy, even though you can totally see the the cart 
that the the monsters are. yes <laughs> but i do man the 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 visual of that impossibly long hallway is good yeah. and the shot of the engineer in silhouette is so great yeah. it just looks like a big penis <laughs> I, I think that's on purpose that's yeah. a big that's very much a clive barker like oh, yeah. head rex kind of thing yeah but when she finally puts the, the puzzle box together and meets pinhead and all the others and the rest wait wait wait, wait hold on chatterbox immediately goes straight to putting two fingers in her mouth yes yeah. he does they love it don't know why it, that was weird yeah it's he he looks like nemesis from resident evil but like without the steroids like <laughs> you know when the guy in batman and robin gets the bane serum and then becomes all bulky yes. this guy looks like before he gets the bane serum yeah, that's the, absolutely and then of course the the one everyone loves the most butterball <laughs> <laughs> the one I would play. The, the constant chapped lips that he's got to fix. <laughs> there are four of us on this call. Who's who? Okay. Oh okay. God. Okay. Well, I don't know. Do, who wants to have the throat, the throat pussy, <laughs> the thrust? The thrust. <laughs> you can't see me, but my hand is way the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess I'm probably the fattest right now, so I'll go butterball. <laughs> Bet. JT, are you, are you're always cold, so the ch- ch- the chattering teeth. <laughs> <laughs> sure, and that leaves Mally as Pinhead. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, fuck Mary, kill chatter, <laughs> <laughs> butterball. Well, you got to. Go, I'm gonna go ahead and say the office. You got to go with throat pussy lady as the woman you marry, right? Sure. Just so you have. And you, uh, yeah, and you know Butterball's wild in the sack. I was gonna marry Butterball. Well, you can't go with Chatterbox because he's gonna be talking too much. So you yeah. can't go with him for marrying her. <laughs> I'm marrying. I'm marrying Butterball. That's a cuddly go. some bitch. Yeah. Yeah. And he's eaten, you know? He's going to take care of you. When they did the sequel, the guy who played Chatterer said that he insisted on having eyes. Yeah. He's like, I can't fucking b- bump around the set again for a full <laughs> 40 days or whatever. Yeah. Butterball nor uh, Chatter could, uh, their prosthetics could not let them see, which yeah. I thought was weird because Butterball has these- Sweet Morpheus glasses? <laughs> <laughs> right. Little tiny circle sunglasses. And I'm like, surely they could put eye holes where you can at least see through those. But no, the whole thing. Nah. What if I told you? <laughs> what if I told you Butterball could see all along? <laughs> um, so, Kiersey puts this puzzle box together. Mm. And I got to say, if I put this box together and- I saw, you know, like the lighting effects, the fog, yeah. all that shit into this room. And then these four distinct creatures. Yeah. One that's got like an inside out mouth. Yeah. One that's got acupuncture to the face. Another one that's got a throat vagina. Mm-hmm. And all this shit's happening. She is so coherent. Nobody reacts to anything in this movie. <laughs> Not I, at all. When Steve watches the engineer jump through the wall, he's essentially just like, huh, Yeah, <laughs> isn't that interesting? <laughs> what was that? My thing is, like, if that was happening to me, I'd be vomiting and pissing my pants yeah. and shitting my pants all at the same time, crying. I'd probably go into cardiac arrest. <laughs> Again, you guys just don't understand what London was like in the 80s. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> this is par for the course. Yeah. The the rave scene was real big. Yeah. You know, this was just, this is a Tuesday. But, but she's having a full discussion with Pinhead. Like, it's nothing. Dustin, that's a waste of good suffer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which I gotta say, the Cenobites are pretty understanding when she's like, it was a mistake, I'll take you to Frank. Like, they go from, come with us, to, oh, yeah. oh, no, yeah, okay, cool, take us to him. Like, really fucking quick. Oh, shit, we didn't know that, sorry. Which is why I, because I don't think they're the antagonist, like, ever. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen the other movies, but throughout this one, it's like, they're just a a force of nature. They're yeah. like, all right, you saw the box. Now we got to torture you. Yeah. It's kind of just the rules, you know? Pinhead's just like the, the voice of exposition for the movie, right? Yep, yep. He's like, oh, we're explorers through different dimensions. This is the late night tour so we can <laughs> swear if we want. <laughs> <laughs> and to be fair, he does say they'll also give them pleasure. Mm-hmm. So he's almost like uh, the, the aliens from Dude, Where's My Car? Sure. Uh, like, that's the other side of it. Yeah. yeah and, and you can actually, like, there's a lot of Clive Barker in that movie, oh, too. Oh, so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but also, to go back to the fact that no one reacts to anything, when when they finally get the confession out of Frank, mm-hmm. who is now now looks like Larry, that dude gives the best response to her. Do you guys remember what he says to her? <laughs> To Kirsty, you tricked me, you bitch. Yeah, he goes, you set me up. Dot dot dot, bitch. Also, she <laughs> no goes, emotion. She goes home, and yeah, Frank's wearing Larry's skin. He's got like blood and like skin dripping off his ears. Yeah, like a like, like a like a suit. 
like an Edgar suit. Like an Edgar suit. Strawberry jelly in his hair. It's like he it's like he was floating in a bloodbath because the whole his whole back and the back of his hair is just coated in blood. And she's like, And eh. she doesn't notice. Yeah. Doesn't comment on it at all. I see it pretty pretty easily. I'm like, yeah. hey man, do you got something going on back there? I'll put my hands on, on my head. <laughs> 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 okay, wait, 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 real quick. Did it bother before we get any further? Did it bother anybody when Frank was like mid transformation mm. when he had no skin? No, I loved that. <laughs> that was my favorite part. Oh yeah, we had jizz all over his face. Yeah, yeah. it bugged me that he wore a shirt like oh, sure. white of him. Like, it got so disgusting, and in, in my head, I'm just like, like motherfucker, like, dark colors. <laughs> Come on, yeah, you could have put a trench coat on or something. Like you ain't getting those stains out, bro. <laughs> No amount of Tide is working for you. You might as well throw that fucking shit away. I like that he gets mad that Julia doesn't want to touch him when sure. he's just meat. And he's like, come here, damn it, I want to touch you. And I'm like, dude, right. th- read the room. I'm <laughs> like, come on, Julia, it's 1987. We going in raw, baby. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus my God. Christ. I'll, yeah, but Larry has got to be, yeah, like you said, the most like unobservant person ever. Because like... He never really goes in this this room. I'm like, no. this is it's part of your house. Like yeah. you never just you never go in there. I mean, I I can't hold that against him because I got to say we have two bathrooms in this apartment. Mm. I haven't seen the inside of one of them in like a month and a half. <laughs> oh boy, I, fair enough, fair enough. I guess I know it's there. I'll check on it if there's a problem, but. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> you check on it if there's a Frank. <laughs> you see if you got a hidden Frank in the wall. <laughs> I feel like I would notice a big bloody corpse walking around, but hey, who knows? Sir, I think you have a Frank problem. I, I literally got one note left, yeah. and it's about the ending. Do you guys have anything else before we get there? I think we can get into it. I, I will say, I think the biggest jump scare of the movie is when that statue falls out of the closet. <laughs> the Jesus statue? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would say it's the cut to the screaming monkey. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's that's cut, pretty yeah. good. Because that gets me every fucking time. It's jarring. And by every fucking time i mean the two times i've ever seen this movie. <laughs> <laughs> hey still a true statement sure yeah like two a lot no but weird that it's happened twice <laughs> <laughs> nathan this is your movie do you yeah. want to recap the ending sure as best you can <laughs> sure yeah i will do my best um so yeah so christy uh, kirsty rather has uh has turned frank over to the cenobites they yep. put a bunch of hooks in him until he explodes yeah. <laughs> well i mean nathan have you ever gone fishing that's exactly what it's oh, like. yeah, yeah the all the fish keep explode. exploding <laughs> yeah but not before delivering uh, a truly bizarre final line. Jesus wept. Yeah. yeah. And apparently the scripted line, he was supposed to look at her and just go, fuck you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Andrew Robinson told Clive Barker it would be a cooler line if he said Jesus wept. Uh, disagree. Yeah, totally disagree. Yeah. Well, what if he just, what if his final line was just, ow, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> is that what I've been doing to people? His final line is just, <laughs> So the Cenobites decided to go back on their contract. We get a a bunch of little chases, very slow chases. So as slow. Kirsty solves and resolves the puzzle like four times. Dude, I love when he, she's tried to solve it. Pinhead, Pinhead's like, "No, don't do that." He literally <laughs> says, "Don't do that," <laughs> while he's makes, standing right in front makes of her. No effort to stop her. <laughs> no, please don't stop. Uh. The reason these effects look so bad, according to Clive Barker, is they were they ran out of a budget. So he and quote some Greek guy. <laughs> animated oh. them by hand okay. oh oh you're talking about like the little like cummies that go back into yeah. the box yes. <laughs> that's what i wrote ghost jizz <laughs> yeah the the, the simon the the rainbow simon oh that should be that's what they should be called the sim the simon bites oh my god <laughs> simon bites cinnamon bites cinnamon toast bites <laughs> <laughs> the simonimonies. After after banishing the semen bites, they uh, <laughs> they get out of the house, which burns down in a uh, weird dissolve. Yeah. Which I gotta say, I looked at my phone for two seconds, looked up, and the house was completely burned to the ground. I was like, I fucking missed something. <laughs> but you didn't. That's just the way it's edited. No, I rewound. I rewound, and it happened again. I was like, where's the fucking house go? <laughs> so Kirsty throws the box into the fire, and uh, the uh, the. Uh, unhoused gentleman who's been following her through the movie. <laughs> the unhoused gentleman. <laughs> he comes, takes he it out comes. of the fire. I didn't see that part. He, he, arrives, have a different version. he arrives all over the place, <laughs> burns alive, turns into a dragon skeleton, yes. yeah. and yeah. flies away. He to does re- an animality. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Nightwolf. Uh, and then he takes the uh, the puzzle box, box, I guess, back to the guy who sold it to Frank originally so the cycle can begin again question mark yeah like I gotta say 
when I first pushed play on HE double hockey sticks taking off, <laughs> I did not I did not expect the movie to end with a fucking flaming ghost chicken. I remember watching the end of this movie with my dad and asking him, did I miss something? <laughs> right? You described it like and, and, like re- reminding me what happened. I still don't understand. No, I don't get it. I don't get it at all neither. So you know what? I'm not even going to bother. I'm not going to (laughs) try to figure this out. Like, the movie ends with this homeless guy just turning into, like, the fucking... The cheapest version of a Balrog you could ever think of. Why? He he turns into an Aerodactyl and gets a (laughs) refund. (laughs) But also, neither Kirsty or her boyfriend react... At all? At no, all. Not at all. Yeah. I guess this is like next to seeing the Cenobites rip a man in half and make him explode with chains. I guess this is kind of not yeah. that surprising. Right. But I guess Christy, like at that point, she'd be like, you know what? I'm not fucking surprised anymore yeah. after what I just saw. That would be a good line to go out on. <laughs> this was like a common celebratory display in 80s Britain. They called it sizzling sillies. <laughs> yeah, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a feeling that that... Uh, dragon thing was made earlier with plans to use it earlier. Oh, yeah? And then that got scrapped. <laughs> uh-huh. I have a feeling it was for another movie, and they're just like, let's fucking use that. <laughs> they're like, this looks cool as shit. Can we use this? JT, I thought you were going to say, I have a feeling that dragon thing was made up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they have those. It was all in their head. Then they all, then they woke up. We, we all just had the same fever dream. It's not actually <laughs> yeah. in the movie. Yeah. I wonder if it makes sense in the book. And they just didn't have time, or there's a deleted scene. No, that's not. That's, that's not yeah, in the. That's, oh, it's not in the novella at all. Okay, well then, I fuck me. I got nothing. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Well, that's the ending. I don't. Do you guys have anything else before we get into the rest? Because I don't even know how to dissect that ending. Like I don't understand. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I've got a fully joke silver lining uh, okay. up coming up. So yeah, that I'm right there with you. All right. Well, let's. Uh, as the, as the British would say, let's tally no further and let's get into Prop Cop. Let's tally no further? Yeah. Okay. That's what they say, right? Sure. I don't know. Sure. Look, man, I'm tr- I tried. Segways are hard. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, well, who wants to go first for Prop Cop? Uh, I'll go. Okay. Um, I don't really want anything for this movie, but if I had to pick one thing, I'm going to go with the wind chime made of body parts. Okay. That would look good on my front door. <laughs> I went with the TV that always shows flowers blooming. I, you know, I, I don't know that it'd be very entertaining, but it'd be kind of a cool conversation piece yeah. for my living room. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, JT, you got anything? And it's okay if you don't. I don't know, man. Frank <laughs> Switchblade. Oh, okay. yes. The Switchblade. Oh, okay. Can't go wrong with that. That's good. I, um... I went with one that has a very brief screen time, uh-huh. but you took the smoking chicken, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's when uh, it's when Julia and, and Larry are first getting in the house and they're looking at Frank's bedroom. Oh yeah, question mark. And uh, there's this little porcelain figure. <laughs> that Larry picks up that I, I don't. I mean, there's no other way to say it. It's two porcelain dolls, and they are getting down Having penetrative sex. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good, so good, uh, good pick. I'll take that. That makes more sense than the smoking chicken. Yeah, yeah. Which I gotta say, that man is hunchback as fuck. He's having a hard time getting in there. <laughs> I think I'm gonna skip bit part unless you guys have anything because I got one, I got bro. One, I dude. got one because there's like four other people. I guess maybe. I hope Nathan <laughs> picked the same one as me. I think we might have. All right. Nathan, is it one of the nuns that <laughs> one of the, ju- walks past one of the, the judgmental sidewalk? nuns <laughs> that just gives her the dirtiest stank eye? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, because there's two of them. Yep, that's us. Hell yeah. All right. Me and Nathan just planned our Halloween costume. <laughs> <laughs> JT, there's not much to pick from, so if you don't have one, it's okay. But uh, no, um, I guess the. Mm, no. Okay. <laughs> I don't really don't want to be any of these people. I'll, I'll pick the uh, the woman that is so frustrated in the pet store <laughs> that there's not a manager with her pet sure. bird. Why not? I love that JT said, I don't want to be any of these people. <laughs> any of them. I was going to say the non pervy delivery, like the furniture, the movers, yeah. but like even he, he was disgusting too. Yeah, he's drinking hot beer that got thrown at him. <laughs> yeah, I know. Who throws a beer like that? What an asshole. People in movies. Yeah, that's true. 80s London. God, guys. They also drink milk at dinner. Oh. Oh. <sighs> JT, you could be the little uh, annoying shit boy that pokes on the glass that the snake's in in the pet store. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that scene inspired <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> Actually, no. Better. Swap out the dude in the statue for a statue of JT. Good. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Nice. All right. Well, I guess we we got nothing else to discuss other than silver linings. So why don't we get there? Yeah. 
Nathan, you said you had a joke. I'm going to go ahead and get that one out of the way. Okay. Uh, you know, for me, the old man got to keep the box and the money. Oh, All nice. Right. That's a good racket he's got going on there. <laughs> okay. Right. I, I'm going to ask this question, even though I know probably no one knows the answer. Mm. Is that Does that guy ever come back? Has he ever explained how he got the box? Nope. Okay. Didn't think so. What about you, Mally? Uh, that shop's return policy is apparently fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I... Uh, well, JT, do you have anything before I go? I really don't. Th- I don't know, man. The homeless, <laughs> homeless man got his crickets. Hey, that's good. Homeless homeless man got, the, with that. Got, got a good meal. Yeah. Got a good got meal. Got a good meal. Uh, I'm going to go with the obvious one, which is- There's an obvious one? Well, Julia got what was coming to her, that yeah. fucking harpy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. Everybody gets what's coming to him. I love that somehow the knife she gets stabbed with drains her of her soul. Oh, like, Frank also <laughs> puts his hand in her neck. Yeah, in like a quick shot. But there's like a there's a weird. Do you, you guys? Do you guys notice when he throws that one dude up against the wall? There's like a straw sound effect. Yep. <laughs> like you yep. hear like. Yep. <laughs> oh, okay, so I really wish that same sound effect was the first time when Larry was dripping blood in the attic <laughs> and it showed the attic soaking up the blood. I really wish that straw effect was there i i also like that somehow julia got from the stairs to, to the, the bed. bed yes and then it had her face yes. popped open no explanation no i kept thinking of the dragon ball z abridged when uh when cell says hey you want to watch me drink this guy <laughs> 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 and butterballs licking his lips in the background yeah. <laughs> well let's um let's uh, let, let me say this i i have a feeling that if you watch hellraiser and you've never seen it before mm. uh if you're like any one of us you probably didn't enjoy your time <laughs> so let's double feature this bitch let's mm-hmm. say you want to watch something after you watch the original hellraiser sure we're gonna give you a perfect pairing we're like some yays of movies absolutely so nathan how about you go ahead first what do you what do you want to pair with hellraiser uh, i would go keep the horrific love story train going uh and continue on with bride of chucky yeah. okay. my my favorite of the child's play movies <laughs> all right your favorite really yeah i know i love that movie i, I don't huh. think it's the best but i it, i really love it i got a weird nostalgic love for two two oh, yeah. is so good jt do you got a uh uh, pick me up in mine. Um, nah, let's get me go to somebody. Else. <laughs> you 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 know it. what happens on this show. <laughs> okay, you know what? Okay, to <laughs> let's do um to continue the love story thing. Uh, of course, uh, see she's all Chucky. that. Okay, hey, all right. nice. I like see the Chucky a lot. I know it's people fun. a lot of people don't, but I actually <laughs> I actually have two. Oh, um, so I'll do I'll do the obvious one first. So if you finish watching Heck Above and you want something <laughs> as like a palate cleanser, uh-huh. um, why not why not go with another film where someone wears another person like a suit, Men in Black? Hell okay. Yes. Okay. Um, the second I'm gonna suggest because I literally watched it immediately after finishing this, uh-huh. and it is Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. Yeah. Fantastic. I still need to see that. I cannot recommend that movie enough, y'all. Awesome. <laughs> So I I couldn't really think of anything but <laughs> like anything that had a through line anyway like uh-huh. so I just thought I was just saying the the phrase Hellraiser overhead over and over in my head mm-hmm. and I was like you know what has an imperfect rhyming title to this movie mm. which would be Moonraker <laughs> so why not watch that Jesus Christ Hellraiser <laughs> exactly so watch Moonraker it's totally fucking different make you forget all about this movie he's attempting reentry <laughs> well, yeah, well I, never mind I guess they're more unlike than I thought <laughs> Jesus um, I already know the answer but I gotta ask mm. do we recommend the original Hellraiser <sighs> You know, I don't. I I wish I wish I li- this is one movie that I actually wish I liked more than I do. There's some I think there's some really interesting sequences and ideas here, but I, like I said, I think this is one that's going to benefit from a remake yeah, that can yeah. uh, that can tackle these in a more interesting way. Agreed. Mally? Yeah, I I agree with Nathan. Um it just like the practical effects are really good, mm-hmm. but and I know it's a classic and whatever, mm-hmm. but I am excited for the remake, but I gotta say, Fifty Shades of Guts just doesn't <laughs> work for me. No. Heck above, so below. <laughs> <laughs> JT, what about you? Do you recommend Hellraiser? No, and, it, and I'm, again, I'm also going to agree with Nathan. It's it's heartbreaking mm-hmm. because Pinhead is such an iconic character. Just like it introduced a lot of people to Pennywise, I hope this remake 
can get people into it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. I, I hope this remake's good. Um, I, I don't recommend it either. I just think it's honestly kind of boring. Mm. There's so, 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 so many other 80s horror movies that are doing this better. Yeah. Like this kind of thing. And Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> yeah. And I cannot believe there are 10 of these films with an 11th on the way. Yeah. I, I can't believe it. Like, 90% of those were straight to DVD. Oh, yes, All of them after yes. the fourth one. Yeah. Yep. I, I looked into it because, you know, 11 seems high for a horror franchise. Uh-huh. It's really not. Well, I mean, like for like the big tentpole ones, like your Friday the 13th, there's 12 of those if you count Freddy versus Jason. Uh-huh. Halloween, there's 13 if you include Halloween Ends coming out. Saw, there's nine with a just recently announced a 10th one coming. Uh-huh. A nine Texas Chainsaws, a nine on Elm Street's nine, if you also count Freddy vs. Jason. Do you guys want to take a guess mm. which franchise has the most? Oh, man. I used to know this. Puppet Master. Uh, it's not Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> it's like strictly horror? Strictly horror. Hmm. Fuck. I, I don't think anyone's going to get it. I'll just go ahead and say it. But yeah. I'll tell you what, how many movies there are. Okay. 38. What? With a 39th coming in November. Faces of Death. Nope. I don't know. It's kind of bullshit, but it's the Amityville movies. Oh, because sure. Uh, they just slap the name Amityville yeah. on anything mm. and they put it out. So there's Amityville in Space came out this year. Wait, wait, so what? Ghost <laughs> of Amityville yeah. is coming out in November. Yeah. Uh, Amityville Shark came out a couple years ago. Because <laughs> you can, because you, 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 there's no copyright on the word Amityville. Yeah. So anyone can put it in their title and it sort of counts. Dude, wait, where's the reality show Amityville House Flippers? <laughs> <laughs> Real Housewives of Amityville? Yes. <laughs> Amityville F Boy Island. <laughs> oh my god yeah it's not so many movies that are a part of the amityville franchise big brother in amityville <laughs> yeah it's crazy i was thinking about that yeah big brother yeah actually i'm gonna i just have some of the films pulled up here just oh yeah it, around the two the mid 2000s yeah like to the 2005 to 2011 is when they like oh we could start making these movies amityville mount misery road <laughs> amityville harvest amityville scarecrow wait one of them's called amityville vibrator <laughs> <laughs> amityville karen yep uh, you know you, that one's of its time of course the amityville moon amityville in the hood they have put out one two three four five six <laughs> well they put out five but three more to come this year what alone the fuck? and some of the, a lot of these are from the uh the fucking the asylum like oh, a lot yeah. of these are asylum movies too. oh yeah 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 so yeah amityville apparently running away with this shit great jesus all right well that unless we have anything else to discuss guys that's hellraiser that's hellraiser mm-hmm. i've always said that <laughs> <sighs> if you listener want to just give us absolute shit because hellraiser is your favorite movie sure you can do so by going to the server linings playlist at gmail.com and sending us an email uh, or you can DM us on Instagram, Twitter, wherever we are, and let us know your thoughts. Um, and you can also subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we're on pretty much all major podcasting platforms. Uh, if you haven't already, we ask you to take a second, just a brief moment, to leave us a rating and some feedback. You can even follow us on Reddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. And guys, here's what I'll say. This is the first of the spooky linings. Mm. And I'm sorry, listener, if you like these movies, we just didn't. Uh, but I will say, I think next week we're going to get we're going to get back to form. Yeah. Uh, with something that we're very familiar with um, and keep these spooky linings running and have a little more fun, I think. So uh, next week's my pick. And I have a clue for what we're going to be talking about. And that clue is this movie is where society dumped its worst nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to hell. Yeah. Who, me? <laughs> Ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling we're going to have a lot to talk about next week. I'm so, so excited. JT, I'm sorry you didn't like this movie, and I'm sorry you didn't have much to contribute, but I have a feeling, a sneaky suspicion, you'll have more to say on the next week's episode. Definitely. Yeah. Agreed. Spooky Linens continues next Monday, listener. Uh, tune in then. Where we're talking about nightmares and surprises. Um and until then, as always, I got nothing. Excelsior! <laughs> <laughs> oh, and rest in peace, Oatmel, I forgot to say. And Donald Pleasant. Not yet. Nope. Only on the Halloween no, episodes. Lines. No, only on the Halloween episodes. <laughs> okay. All right. Excelsior! 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 Oh, look at us.
wraps up another fantastic episode of the Silver Linings playlist. If you would be so kind, we ask that you leave us some feedback on how we did, plus a like and subscribe. We'll be back next week with another great episode. See ya!